A very happy new year to everybody. Happy new year, everyone. Welcome to Holy Trinity today for our service of Holy Communion with carols. And a special welcome to those of you who are watching us online. You should all have the uh, service leaflet today. Please stand. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel. Light has sprung up for the righteous. Glory to God in the highest. The light and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Our first hymn, hymn 74. Let us pray. As we kneel with the shepherds before the newborn Christ child, we open our hearts in penitence and faith. Lord Jesus, you were born for our salvation. Lord, have mercy. You came as Saviour to bring wholeness and peace. Christ, have mercy. You come to bring light into the darkness of our lives. Lord, have mercy. May God, who loved the world so much that he sent his Son to be our Saviour, forgive you your sins and make you holy to serve him in the world through Jesus Christ our Lord. Almighty God, 
In the birth of your Son, you have poured on us the new light of your incarnate word and shown us the fullness of your love. Help us to walk in his light and dwell in his love, that we may know the fullness of his joy, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please sit for our readings. A reading from Ecclesiastical, chapter 24. Wisdom praises herself and tells of her glory in the midst of her people. In the assembly of the Most High, she opens her mouth, and in the presence of his hosts, she tells of her glory. I came forth from the mouth of the Most High and covered the earth like a mist. I dwelt in the heavens, and my throne was in a pillar of cloud. Alone I compassed the vault of heaven and traversed the depths of the abyss. Over waves of the sea, over all the earth, and over every people and nation, I have held sway. Among all these, I sought a resting place. In whose territory should I abide? Then the creator of all things gave me a command, and my creator chose the place for my tent. He said, make your dwelling in Jacob, and in Israel receive your inheritance. Before the ages, in the beginning, he created me, and for all the ages I shall not cease to be. In the holy tent I ministered before him, and so I was established in Zion. Thus, in a beloved city, he gave me a resting place, and in Jerusalem was my domain. I took root in an, in, in an honoured people, in the portion of the Lord, his heritage. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our second hymn, 75. Alleluia, alleluia. The word became flesh and lived among us, and we have seen his glory. Alleluia. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ 
according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. The true light, which enlightens everyone, was in the world, and the world came into being through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God, who were born not of blood or of the will of the flesh, or of the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and lived among us, and we have seen his glory, the glory as of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. John testified to him and cried out, this was he of whom I said, he who comes after me ranks ahead of me because he was before me. From his fullness, we have all received grace upon grace. The law indeed was given through Moses. Grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God. It is God, the only Son, who is close to the Father's heart, who has made him known. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. May I speak in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The first reading we had today, read by Sue Bull, was from the book of Ecclesiasticus, sometimes known as Sirach, which is from the part of the Bible we call the Apocrypha, or Deuterocanonical books of the Bible. I think perhaps a little bit of history and background to those books is timely and worthwhile. These books were accepted by the early 3rd and 4th century Christian churches since they originated in Jewish scriptures compiled between 100 and 300 years before the birth of Christ, although the earliest Jewish Christians had omitted them from their first Hebrew version of the Bible. When the Reformation came, the Lutheran and Reformed Church Protestants of the 15th and 16th centuries decided that those books were of lesser, lesser value and they excluded them from the approved list. And the early Anglican Church followed suit when Cranmer and others decided what to include in their earliest English Bible translations and only added them as an appendix to the Old Testament. So for almost 300 years, the texts were hardly ever referred to or read in church. They still tend to be not read as frequently as the more familiar passages. But as we heard in the reading today, they can tell us much about how the Hebrew nation and the theologians in it, in those ancient times, wrestled with the idea of how and what to describe the person of God and whether God would come to earth in person, as promised by the prophets, especially Isaiah and Malachi, in the form of a Messiah, or as Malachi tells it, in the form of a great cleanser, a refiner's fire, a fuller's cleansing soap, to save the world and its people from its sins, as they, and especially the priests of the time, were no longer following closely the laws of Moses and the patriarchs, that had been given to them so long ago. And by being ignored, had caused them so many problems over the centuries through wars and invasions and the Hebrews' long exile into Babylon. For centuries and centuries, 
mankind has wrestled with a fundamental question, who or what is God and what is God's purpose for us? It was the ancient Greek philosophers who developed the general term that represented for them the fundamental laws of the universe and called it logos, which translated is the word. And that term was in general use across the Greek speaking word world of the Eastern Mediterranean. At the time the book of Ecclesiasticus was written, Israel was under the rule of the Greeks following the victorious military campaigns of Alexander the Great many years earlier. The Greeks understood the word to refer to the principle that gives meaning to life and the universe. And naturally, that was taken up by the Hebrews of the time, who understood it to refer to both the beginning of everything and their own God, the supreme being who made it all happen. And when the religious writers compiled the book of Genesis from ancient tradition and later thoughts, they adapted the term logos, the word, to describe how by the word of God were the heavens and everything in them made. That then is the background to our first passage from Ecclesiasticus, in which God is, create, is described as the creator of all things and sends what he calls wisdom to the land of Jacob and of Israel, to the people of Zion and the city of Jerusalem, to the chosen people. When you look at the wording of the passage, you can see how difficult it must have been for them to try and describe what they were telling, as they in turn adapted the description of the word of God as, in the assembly of the Most High, wisdom opens her mouth and tells of her glory. I came forth from the mouth of the Most High and covered the earth as a mist. I encompassed the vault of heaven and traversed the depths of the abyss. And then that the creator of all things gave me a command and chose a place for me to go, for my tent. He said, make your dwelling in Jacob and in Israel receive your inheritance. So in describing the sending of the one that was to come in the form of wisdom that has come from the mouth of God, combined with the principles of the Greek or Hellenistic idea of the word, it's not difficult to see where the Gospel writer John acquires his insight when writing that most well-known passage that begins his Gospel, in the beginning was the word, part of which passage we heard again today as our Gospel reading, and the expected sending by God of the word to his chosen race, the land of Zion, Israel, as forecast by Ecclesiasticus. For John takes up that idea and develops it. The word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we have seen his glory as of a father's only son. And John too underpins it with his reference to the law given by Moses, and grace and truth given in the form of Jesus Christ. It's in the apocryphal books too that we find some other themes being developed that we associate with the birth of the Messiah, Jesus Christ. Especially that the one God is the supreme being dwelling in heaven and how his archangels and angels convey greetings to and from people on earth and become a way of communicating between God in heaven and the chosen ones on earth. Thus, we have in the lovely accounts by Luke and by Matthew of the birth of the Messiah, the visits by angels to Zechariah and to Mary, to Joseph in a dream, and following the birth to the shepherds in those fields near Bethlehem. Though many passages within the Apocrypha are, of course, unfamiliar to us, the early Christian church regarded them as le legitimate Hebrew scriptures, and today they can help us make more sense of the thoughts, the words and descriptions chosen by the New Testament compilers who were to come later. God, the Word, wisdom in the form of Jesus Christ, 
has indeed come among us, as foretold by the prophets and in the ancient scriptures, and we worship him today in our hearts and in our lives. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. The whole universe belongs to you, and yet you care for each one of us. You come to us in love to be our saviour and our friend. You have chosen us to be your people and given us of your Holy Spirit. We give you thanks and praise. We share with all who continue to give thanks for the coming of Jesus into the world. We see how this marvelous event is celebrated by your church internationally. We pray for those now preparing for confirmation and all who are seeking to know you better. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. We bring before you rulers of people, politicians, and leaders of nations. We pray for the well being of Elizabeth, our Queen, and for that of the royal family. We remember all who are striving to bring peace and unity to humankind. And we remember this morning with gratitude and admiration the life and commitment of your servant, Archbishop Desmond Tutu. May his troubled country and others learn and benefit from his example. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We give thanks that you care for us as our Father and that we all belong to your family. We pray for our own parents, families and friends. We pray also for those who, during this holiday period, have found themselves separated from those whom they love. May they and we know that you are with us and love us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all who are fearful for their future, for those, because of the pandemic, are unable to get the medical attention they need. Give them the comfort of your love, O Lord. Bless all who work in caring for others and relieving their anxiety. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We ask your blessing upon our loved ones. May they know newness of life in your kingdom. Let us keep silent for a moment as we think at the start of this year those who are no longer with us but whose memories we cherish. Almighty Lord, 
Hear our prayer and fulfill your purposes in us as you accomplished your will in our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Please would you stand. Unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and his name shall be called the Prince of Peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Offer one another safely the sign of peace. Priests, our third hymn, 55.
The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. And now, Lord, we give you thanks, because in the incarnation of the Word, a new light has dawned upon the world. You have become one with us, that we might become one with you in your glorious kingdom. Therefore, with all the angels of heaven, we lift our voices to proclaim the glory of your name and sing our joyful hymn of praise. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We praise and bless you, loving God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. And as we obey his command, send your Holy Spirit, that broken bread and wine outpoured may be for us the body and blood of your dear Son. On the night before he died, he had supper with his friends, and taking bread, he gave it to them and said, Take eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When supper was ended, he took the cup of wine. Again he praised you, gave it to them and said, drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. So we remember all that Jesus did. In him we plead with confidence his sacrifice made once for all upon the cross, bringing before you the bread of life and cup of heaven. We proclaim his death and resurrection until he comes in glory. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Lord of all life, help us to work together for that day when your kingdom comes and justice and mercy will be seen in all the earth. Look with favour on your people. Gather us in your loving arms and bring us with Mary and Joseph and all the saints to feast at your table in heaven. Through Christ, and with Christ, and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory are yours, O loving God, for ever and ever. Amen. Please kneel or sit. Rejoicing in the presence of God here among us, as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We break the bread of life, and that life is the light of the world. God is here among us, light in the midst of us. Bring us to light and life. Jesus, Lamb of God, have mercy on us. Jesus, bearer of our sins, have mercy on us. Jesus, redeemer of the world, grant us peace. Jesus is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, and I shall be healed.
May the joy of the angels, the eagerness of the shepherds, the perseverance of the wise men, the obedience of Joseph and Mary, and the peace of the Christ child be yours this Christmas period. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to proclaim the Word made flesh. Glory, thanks, and praise to God. Amen.